Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. In this week's video, I want to talk to you about a particular detail of setting up speakers. And mostly this is for people who are in asymmetrical rooms. But even if you're in a fairly symmetrical room, what happens if you set up your speakers symmetrically in the room? So there's a left-right symmetry from your in, in, in relation to your speakers. But then when you listen, it turns out that your center panned elements aren't exactly in the middle. And you're wondering, okay, how do I match the speakers so that my stereo image is once again centered around the middle, right? Do you just uh, take measurements to compare the frequency response? How do you set the volume to get your center pan elements to sit back in the middle, the middle and to get an even stereo image? And the, the thing here is that I tend to always end up doing speaker volume matching and centering the stereo image by ear. And I don't rely on measurements to do that. And in, at the very least, I double check that the stereo image is properly centered just using my ears. And today I want to talk to you about why that is and how to go about it. So the first thing you have to understand is that even in a symmetrical looking room, small asymmetries in the room, so for example, the location of the door or a window or even just sort of inconvenient construction details where maybe one wall is built slightly differently to the other can affect the symmetry of your stereo image because the both speakers don't see the exact mirror image of the other around them. And I've got a frequency response of a pair of speakers loaded up here. This was in a room where the side walls were perfectly symmetrical but the front wall behind the speakers was at a slight angle and there was a window in it. And this is very typical of what you see when you have these smaller asymmetries in the, in the room and how they affect the, the response of each of the speakers. All right? So here we've got the left speaker in blue and the right speaker in red. And what you can see here in particular in the very low end, there's quite a bit of difference between these speakers. It's not massive, but it's it's definitely noticeable. And we've got sort of a, a slight uh, difference between them here in the in the low mids as well. It kind of evens out towards the top. There's, a, there's some kind of uh, measurement fault that must be happening here up here, but let's not, let's not focus on that right now. Um, the, the point is, if you had a a, an element in your mix playing and it was panned in the center, then the high frequencies of that element would sit pretty much in the middle. But then lower frequencies would actually shift depending on which part of the spectrum they occupy and which speaker gives you more volume at that particular frequency at your listening position. Okay, and again, this is pretty typical of asymmetrical rooms, even when those asymmetries might not be be very obvious. But if you you've set up your speakers and you're experiencing this, where it seems like center elements aren't perfectly in the middle, this might be one of the reasons. Now, how do you deal with this? Well, obviously, you could take measurements and try and figure out what the best match between those are. But as you can see here, this might not be that easy, right? I've opened up this this uh, this window where I can change the the the, um, the position of each of these lines, and so now the question is: Okay, is this the best match of volumes where kind of the top end aligns for most of the spectrum, or maybe if I kind of move this up a bit, so let's say this peak at around, I don't know, what is this, 120 hertz sort of matches. This top end is now sits slightly above the right, the right speaker is slightly louder up here, but it's still quieter down here. It's louder here in this, in this section. What, what is the perfect match? And it's actually really difficult to tell because how you perceive this match, this particular volume match between these speakers is a whole different question again. Okay, and this is why I always end up at least double checking whether the stereo image is centered 
just using my ears because it's way more sensitive to figure out if there is any shift. And if there is an imbalance in, in the frequency response between these two speakers, it'll be much easier for you to kind of find a good middle ground where you say, okay, this is kind of where the majority of that center pan element sort of feels like it sits in the middle. It gives you a, a, a much easier, quicker way to find a compromise in speaker volume between the two speakers to center your stereo image. Of course, speaker equalization, aka room correction software, can also be really helpful for this sort of problem because it can separately equalize or you can separately equalize the two speakers and actually uh, compensate for a mismatch like this, which will then lead to a much more stable phantom center, center panned elements, and obviously also how the, the balance in the stereo image around that center element sits. Okay, so yeah, this is one of the reasons why I always recommend to get some form of room correction software, but to use it in combination with the treatment, right? It can compensate for a lot of these little mismatches that you'll find that are particularly difficult to, to, to address just with treatment in a home studio. Um, but uh, we want to do it at the, at the very end after treatment in order for it not to, not to have to work uh, it's too hard. You basically want any kind of room correction, any kind of equalization of your speakers to be as minimal as possible. In any case, like I mentioned, I always check with my ears because it gives me a, a quicker and easier way to find the best compromise if I'm not using room correction software or even if some sort of equalization is in place to double check that everything is in the center. And the best way to do that is to use a mono pink noise file because that will play exactly the same signal from both your speakers and it will sort of appear like a line on in in the middle of your stereo image right in the center of your stereo image if everything is perfectly aligned and all you really need to do is play a pink noise file a mono pink noise file through both your speakers and then adjust one of the volumes usually the one that is louder so you can turn that one down or the sort of the the the, the one in which direction the the image shifts that tends to be the louder one so you turn that one slightly down until everything moves back into the middle and if you were wondering where to get a file like that obviously you can generate it yourself but i've also got a link to a file like that in my guide to the phantom speaker test which is my guide for setting up speakers in pretty much any room to figure out exactly how wide apart, how far away from you you need to set up your speakers in order to get a stereo image, a balanced stereo image that many have described that sounds like you're working on headphones. So it's it's really the, the, the ultimate way to use your ears to set up your speakers first. And then again, there's a, a link to a pink noise file, a mono pink, for, pink noise file in there that you can use to match the speaker volume and make sure that any elements that are pan center are really centered in your stereo image. All right, that's it for this video. I hope that helped you understand a bit more about stereo uh, stereo image imbalances and what to do about them and kind of a, what I think is the, 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 the best way to deal with those. As always, let's remember to learn to trust our ears and get back to having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.